Hi, Mermaid Junkies. How are you? I hope that you are having a great week. I wanted to talk to you about friendship. This is another thing. And a lot of times I'm sure you'll recognize that the reason that I talk about these things is because these are actually experiences that I'm going through within my own life. So I think that if I'm experiencing them, experiencing them, that maybe you might be as well. You have jellyfish friends. Now, if you know anything about water, anything about marine life or anything, you know that jellyfish sting, right? They either sting because they are doing it to capture their prey or they're stinging and sending out like harpoon-like structures in a way to uh, almost like um, jellyfish actually has been in their stinger. So they do it as a defense mechanism, right? And, and I liken this to this particular friendship that I had. And, and I don't, I hope that it is familiar to you as well. But what I wanted to talk about not only was the friendship, but in actually, in actuality, I wanted to talk about how that friendship might be wrecking havoc on your personal self-love. And you know I'm all into having 100% self-love. And if you start to realize that certain friendships, no matter, even if you do love this person unconditionally, because you can love people unconditionally, but still not have an active participation in their lives. And I wanted to go through a couple of things that have happened to me. So let's see if you can feel familiar that we're, we have some similarities here, if this has ever happened to you. So we can kind of navigate through this together as friends, right? So um, I have this great friendship, friendship and, you know, we have a connection. Everything's great and wonderful, but then it seems like it's this, you know, in a behavioral emotional patterns for people that per particularly like, you know, you say you want, you don't want to be dramatic and say sociopaths or psychopaths or um, highly manipulative people. You don't want to give up on these people ever because people can always change and you're not loving them based on the conditions that they have this behavioral emotional uh, deficiency sort of, right? Because ultimately everyone develops particular behaviors in order to survive as children. And if you continually do something, it becomes so habitual that you really have a difficult time um, changing that behavior. And not only that, um, long term, it takes massive amounts of internal um, work and development within your personality and your soul and your spirit to overcome these particular things. So you can't, I mean, you can say, well, you know, you, we, a lot of times I think you guys, we tend to distance ourselves from people like, oh, that friend's a psycho. You know what I mean? Like, and then you just are like, I'm not going to deal with them and da, 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 and whatever. And a, and a lot of times I can see why we would want to do that, but that's not loving people unconditionally. Because what we have to get to within our own lives is we have to start to understand how that we can separate our, emo our emotions from the other person and what they're doing because you can't take things personal. Well, you can do anything you want. I'm just saying that taking things personal, you know, is not going to help show that you have self-love because once again, you're separating yourself, that connection from other human beings. And that's what a lot of times people do because it's a protective mechanism that we do to protect ourselves, right? It's, it's like almost instinctual. So the thing I think we need to realize is that, you know, I've noticed that there's a lot of times that in, for me and my journey, along my journey, I've thought, you know, oh, well, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to distance myself from that person. And this isn't about me. You know, they're projecting all of this stuff on me. And that's very well known, that whole, that you're projecting. This isn't about me. It's about you. You know, that's another form of not saying I'm interconnected with this person because it's easy to do that. 
because it makes you not accountable and it makes you, it almost gives you a sense of leeway of like, I'm not going to address this and have to look internally within myself because this isn't about me, right? We always want to make it about someone else because it's hard to take a look at yourself and go, no, this actually could be about me because where I'm here to say that a lot of people will say, oh no, this is all about you. It ultimately is about the other person, but it's also about me. It's also about you. And I think when you can be humble enough to admit that and say, you know what? Every person that comes into our lives or my life is actually a teacher. To the part that I, I lost video there. So, but what I wanted to talk about was to, to continue on to that um, subject of the friendship is that I think what's important to understand is that a lot of times when this person, this friend of yours ends up doing things to almost self-destruct, it's all, it, you have to understand that when you are dealing, when you are loving someone unconditionally, that means that regardless of what they ever do to you or hurt you in any way, or they've abused your, your trust or whatever this situation is in that friendship, right? You have to be able to look at that person in an unconditional manner and understand that they are self-preserving, not and not thinking necessarily about you. And I know that sounds terrible and it's very selfish, but the fact of the matter is, is when you trust someone, that means ultimately that you're saying that you trust yourself, right? Because if you don't trust yourself, you can say till the cows come home that you trust someone. Like, I trust you not to do this or I trust you to do this. But if that person doesn't even trust themselves truly and authentically within, they never are ultimately going to trust you. So it's just basically verbiage. Like, I know that's difficult to understand, but you have to understand that when you are dealing with someone that has like huge, huge emotional behavioral disorder, that you have to start to recognize how you're playing a part in this. And I'm just going to read because I wrote this down and I can't really say it the way that I need to and I can't memorize it. So I just wanted to say that I wanted to read this to you because I think it's paramount. It says, what, it, what is important to understand is to understand that this person is using self-preservation. They don't trust themselves, so ultimately they don't trust you. And they self-sabotage to try and prove subconsciously that you couldn't be trusted to begin with. When they can't prove that, that your trustworthiness, they will ultimately run. I don't know if you've noticed this, not literally, it's figuratively, they will run. So they will do things to sabotage and then like get out of Dodge. Do you know what I mean? Like, have you ever experienced that? And then you're left with this aftermath of destruction and just, you know, garbage everywhere. And you're sitting there going, how am I, I don't, what just happened? So uh, anyway, let me continue. So because they can't fathom that someone didn't break that trust, this trust behavior is really a difficult behavioral emotion to overcome. And this is especially true with children that have been sexually abused. And the reason I say that is because their trust has been so violated as a child that that is that will maybe be a lifetime of trying to overcome that particular thing. And so it's 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 so important for us to love ourselves so that we can therefore learn to unconditionally love other people, especially people that I think it's important. If you can look at everyone that you um, come in contact with, to love them on a continual basis of 
seeing them as if they may be hurting. And I think that will give us a lot of humility. It does for me. It gives me a lot of humility to realize that not in a pity sense, because pity isn't love. Let's not get that confused. But when you love someone unconditionally, that means that that's how the Savior loves. And that's how Heavenly Father and God loves, is that they love based on no conditions. They will love you they love you whether you screw up, scream at them, do all kinds of things to ultimately what we do is an, is an outward approach to trying to fix this internal desperate need of feeling um, wounded and that we haven't healed. And so it's always just an acting out of, of regards to being hurt so badly that we don't know how else to heal or to fix ourselves. So we have to figure out all these different tactics or strategies to try and feel better because we want to ultimately always feel better. I mean, that's our ultimate goal in life is to be happy and joyful. It is that man might be happy and find joy. So when we do that, that is ultimately what we're trying to do. So I wanted to, you to just, I wanted to leave you with this is that if you have friendships that you're just trying to figure out, like you don't understand, or there's always chaos, or there's different things going on in that friendship, just try to evaluate, you know, on your own time when, when it's quiet, and maybe you're meditating in the morning or something, um, cause you're meditating, aren't you? I hope you're meditating. Um, oh, sorry about that. Um, it's important to remember to evaluate those friendships. And it's okay if you decide within yourself and within your heart to show more self-love and loving yourself 100% instead of um, being encompassed by this friendship that is not a ping pong game. Like if you're always giving emotionally or you're always giving physically or tangibly, and or emotionally especially and that other friend is never seems to be like now that I think about it they're never really helping me or they're never there when I need them it's really time to reevaluate that friendship and that doesn't mean that you don't love them or that it has to be this horrible wretched fight for you to end the friendship but it's just important for you to be transparent with that friend and you need to be honest and say, you know, I love you very much, but it's just important that this friendship is no longer serving me. Like it's mentally not serving me. It doesn't have to be, you have to make things about them and that it's their fault and it's them or whatever. And you don't need to engage, but it's really important that you're very transparent and you end the friendship because if it's not giving you the things and it's not serving you, it's time to let it go. And you can't have other things come into your life until you're willing to let go of those things that are no longer serving you because the universe will not reward you with something when you have something in its place. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you have to eliminate things so that you can have other things come in. And so I would encourage you to be strong and to stand in your truth and to be transparent and honest um, with other people because in order for you to continue to have a relationship with people and a good solid friendship with people, you have to be able to trust yourself. And that means do not betray yourself by living or being in a friendship that is not serving you and it's not making you feel better because that's what our friendship should do is to encourage, to lift us to our higher self. And if that's not happening, then you need to reevaluate that. And it's not easy. So I'm going to talk in, in another video about how to, um, how to kind of like repair your sense of self-worth when this happens because it wrecks havoc sometimes on, for me and my personal journey, you guys, it's really hard. I mean, there has to be a certain strategy in place so that you can work through those things when you have those moments of being sad or aggravated or angry sometimes. You know, all of these different emotions start to arise within us. So 
I, I hope that this serves you and I hope that you enjoyed this video and I want you to know how much I thoroughly enjoy talking to you on this little camera all by myself in this room that's echoing. I love you very much and thank you for being my friend. Even if it's through the camera, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy our connection. So thank you for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon. As always, I'm yours until my next swim. Ciao!